Right guys, welcome back to another episode of Sofa Photography. As you can see this afternoon we're hanging out with some rather large beasts. The famous African elephant or the overgrown pachyderms. Um, and I've just been taking a few photographs of them so far and usually the best way I like to advise people to photograph elephants is you know with your aperture all the way all the way open so right now I'm using my 70 to 200 mil f 2.8 lens and I am photographing them at f 2.8 uh, and the reason I like doing that is I'll show you a bit later at the computer but it just it, it really makes elephants stand out quite nicely they're a big animal uh, especially when you want to take a photograph of, of generally the entire animal uh, try and milky or, or bokeh out that background quite a bit let them stand out and uh, that's going to be the theme for this uh, this week's episode of Sofa Photography. Uh, we're going to chat all about aperture. So we're going to spend a bit of time with these elephants. I'm going to take a cool a few photos of them, um, and uh, then we might move on to there's a little flower, a little plant just down here on the open plains called an impala lily, where I'm going to take a number of photographs at different apertures, and I'm going to explain to you what's happening with aperture, how it works why it's there and how we can get the most out of it so yeah stick around for that guys but for now let's see what these ellies get up to and um, let's take some photographs the lighting right now is absolutely beautiful it's about what is the time 20 to 5 um, we have been driving around for about an hour and a half so far we actually spent a little bit of time trying to find a leopard but unfortunately it's a bit too elusive for us this afternoon but uh, I'm not going to complain when there's some big ellies around to enjoy. So uh, yeah, we've just been taking uh, a couple of photographs of this big cow over here. She's got a little one with her. And then we've got these two little guys that are just popping out of the woodwork here. And there's probably about another four or five still coming through from that angle there. So yeah, as I say, with elephants, I always like to photograph with them with that sort of uh, aperture of f.2. Uh, if you're using an f6.3 lens, use that. I mean, it's a rather big animal. As long as you're not too far zoomed in, you should get a pretty good depth of field. Um, but what I wanted to explain to you first of all before we move to that beautiful little flower and do some aperture um, playing around I just wanted to explain to you what aperture actually is while we have these beautiful elephants in the background hopefully we don't get charged because Brit will not like that at all but uh, generally speaking elephants in the Timbavati are super duper relaxed so they really like having their photo taken they're pretty good sports anyway the reason why I'm holding my camera is uh and and just by the way this is what we're going to do is this week we'll focus on aperture maybe next week we'll do shutter the week after that we'll do iso and then the week after that we'll do a full sort of manual uh exploration in terms of how we use all of these things together um but what i want to show to you speak to you first draw, about is draw. um just what happens with aperture so never mind the camera because the camera actually while you control what the aperture is doing with your camera your camera actually has nothing else other than that to do with aperture it all comes from your lens so if you can imagine the wider your lens you know the thicker it is the more light it's going to let in right the, the the narrower it is the less light it's going to get it let in now it doesn't matter if you're using a lens like this or a lens like this they all have what we call an iris on the inside of them and so if you can imagine the light travels straight through the barrel down here and then it hits this back wall which is where the iris is in most lenses at least and that iris is just basically a series of blades if you will for lack of better of a better term and those blades close and they open now if the blades are open like this you're going to get more light right compared to like this the best analogy i can give you is just imagine your cat in a dark room they can have those big scary eyes and when you see your cat lazing about in the sun they've got those very narrow little pupils and that's exactly what aperture is doing uh, for, a, for a camera that is so when you stop your aperture all the way down and when I say stop that's just a fancy term in photography for a level if you will a, a, a difference a change um, so when you stop it all the way down like this one for example to f 2.8 that means that the aperture will be let me just make sure I don't drop this Quite expensive and I do love it but the aperture will be wide open meaning that I'm letting in all that light so it's quite strange how aperture numbers work the lower your f-stop number is the bigger your aperture is and the higher your f-stop number is the smaller your aperture is so this would be 2.8 that would be maybe 6.3 that would maybe be 8 that would be 10 11 12 16 you know all the way down until you have this this narrow little pupil um, that's focusing on the world around you're not letting in a lot of light at all but what you get as you up that aperture number or make your uh, aperture smaller, your iris smaller, is you get a greater depth of field. Whereas when you make it uh, a smaller number and therefore widen the aperture, you get a much narrower depth of field. So it just depends how you want to play with it. And you have to remember that every time you make a change to aperture, you're playing with the light 
but also the depth of field that you have. So as soon as we get to that fly up flower, uh, we'll be able to look at some photographs and then compare how things change as the aperture changes. But I'm just going to take a few more photographs of these big old pachyderms and then we'll get rocking and rolling. Don't forget guys, at the end of every episode, we will put up two photographs taken during that episode and you guys let me know which one you prefer, just a bit of fun. Uh, we did it last time with the landscape and the portrait of the sunset. So if you want to go back and check that out and let me know which one you prefer, go for it. But uh, this episode, I'm not too sure which images will make the cut. Maybe one of these elephants, maybe one of the flowers, maybe one of the Grumpy Hippo, which we'll go see for a sundown a bit later. But yeah, keep a lookout for the end of the video where you get to vote on which image you think is the best. Right, so another thing that just came to mind for me, you know, when photographing elephants and, and generally large herbivores that you are bound to come across if you ever come on safari with us out here, is don't get transfixed on trying to capture the entire animal. Very often a photograph of an entire elephant is quite boring in comparison to what you can get. And it's very hard to get that entire animal in your frame when you're working with a big old zoom lens sometimes. Luckily today there are far enough away for me to be using my 400mm lens as well as my 70 to 200 But often what I advise people is when you're photographing elephants and you have a big zoom, a 100 to 400 that we spoke about a few episodes ago, or a 150 to 600 Tamron or Sigma, zoom right in on the tusks, right in on the eye, on the, the, the trunk doing its thing, you know, the trunk coming up to the mouth. Don't worry about getting the whole animal. Rather just think about that little bit of the mouth where the trunk's coming in. Just photograph that little bit there or where the tusk is wrapping around a tree and you'll end up with some really rewarding photographs. I mean, that's where elephants truly shine is when you kind of get into the details of them and you get in, zoom in nice and close on all those little crags and cracks and wrinkles in the skin that make them so unique. Uh, and it's also where you find a lot of detail and it makes it look very sharp and beautiful. Now, I know a little bit earlier I said that I like shooting them at a full open aperture of 2.8. And that's not always the case. I just really love this lens 70 to 200. I mean, it takes beautiful images and at 2.8, uh, it just smashes all the time. So for those of you that are in, a mar in the market for something that's a little bit more professional and uh, at a 2.8 rating or an F2.8, definitely go and get yourselves a 70 to 200 mil F2.8 lens. You will thank me. You will, you will not be upset. They are a little bit pricey, but they really are worth it. With that being said though, I will often photograph elephants even with that lens at f6.3 or f8. And what f8 will do is bring that entire animal into perfect crystal clear clarity. It's, it's like a little bit of a cheat almost. Uh, it brings them into uh, beautiful sharpness. It's, it's a lot of fun to do that. Uh, and it also brings in a little bit of their background. So what I mean is a little bit earlier, and you'll see in the photographs that I'll post around about now, but uh, you'll see in the photograph that I had a bull elephant walking just over here earlier with that dead tree in the background. And I thought to myself, you know, cool, it's a, it's a photograph of an elephant, but what's his environment telling me? Let me try get that dead tree incorporated in. That's a little baby elephant having a tantrum. But uh, try and get that tree incorporated in and, and try and think about the background when it comes to these big pachyderms that are just large gray masses. I mean, they are beautiful animals, but you want to find just a little way of making that image of them a little bit more interesting to look at, a little bit more of a story to tell. Never pass up a good backlighting situation. It's beautiful. Let me quickly get my camera. I'm going to go portrait mode for this. And uh, let's see if we can get that sun coming through. Wait for him to do something interesting, like bring the trunk up. And play with it a bit. There we go. Let's see what I've got there. Cool. Right, and the reason why I like this sort of photography so much is um, just because you get this beautiful bright background and quite a dark subject and the highlights coming around his head looks very, very pretty. So the flower I had in mind is uh, that little pink dot in the background, which I'm sure you can probably not see, but it is there. It's a little impala lily, one of the interesting flowers that only really flowers in winter. Most other things flower in summer. Um, but uh, we are in a bit of a pachyderm conundrum over here. We can't really get out when there's, I don't know, 30 or 40 tons of elephant around you. It's just not that, um, it's just not that beneficial for your health to play games like that. So uh, we're going to try to come back tomorrow morning and see if we can photograph this little flower or if I can find one closer to the camp. We are lucky in that we have a few of them growing around the camp. Uh, so maybe we can uh, cheat a little bit and do it there. But um, as I was saying just a little bit earlier, I just wanted to reiterate, um, you know, with aperture uh, and using a big lens in comparison to a small lens or having your subject closer or further away, um, 
this is why big lenses often offer a little bit more of that bokeh, that milky background, is because they can zoom right in on the subject, therefore blurring out the background more. Um, the other thing you can hope for is to have your subject quite close. Um, and then you can use a smaller lens and get that same blur out. But for instance, if I was to photograph this, let's for instance say this was a 2.8 lens and I was zoomed in all the way on this elephant and I took the little guy over here, or you know, wherever you can imagine one, and I took a, uh, an image at 2.8, uh, the background would be very nice and blurry because I'd be right in on his face, therefore not giving any information from the background at all other than a beautiful yellow and green mixture. Whereas if I was to photograph him with this uh, 200 mm lens from the same place with an aperture of 2.8, you know, I'm obviously not going to be nearly as zoomed in on him. And what that means is that I'm going to have a more in focus background. All right, so it's a strange thing. 2.8 is not just 2.8. It's not always going to just single out your subject and blur out the background. It also depends how far away from your subject you are and what size lens you're using. So if you have any questions in that regard, please feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, if you have any questions about your particular lens, um, or uh, anything that might be confusing you in that regard and uh, I'll happily come back to you and we can try and discuss it uh, through the power of commentary um, but uh, yeah I think we're going to leave our elephants here for this evening um, and come back out tomorrow morning see what we can do and then we'll do a little bit of time at the computer I'll show you how aperture changes things um, you know just because it's fun it's interesting to see these things and what I would say is is to you get your camera out as well get ready um, for the next scene because I'll be going through um, aperture and how we change things and maybe just find a little I don't know little figurine you have lying around your house a little um, I don't know leaf hanging from the tree uh, if you can get your dog to sit still long enough uh, and then get your camera out and we can you can click with me uh, through the settings as I change aperture and you can actually see how more comes into focus less comes into focus the image gets darker and lighter and Britt right now is sitting behind the camera busy squinting at the elephants over there because I think a tree is about to go down so uh, let's pull up on them and have a look but uh, yeah tomorrow morning will be the day guys so get your cameras ready and uh, for you it'll be in the blink of an eye so see you now Welcome to the next day guys. It's uh, very warm this morning, um, but myself and Britt have managed to get out here to the very beautiful Sunset Plains. We decided to rather try and find a thorn tree that we could uh, try and bring into focus and out of focus with the power of aperture. Um, and so what I'm going to be doing is using this little branch over here, and I'm going to be focusing on that little leaf over there. And as I up my aperture, you'll see through the photographs that we're about to go through at the computer, how more and more of the bush comes into focus. And the whole plan is to try and get these tiny little thorns that are growing up this back branch uh, in focus as well as the front branch. And I'm sure you'll see as we go through the images how the subject, which is this little uh, leaf over there, will become less and less apparent as more and more comes into focus. So in other words, it won't be singled out as much. And the way we do this is by using our aperture all right so if you are shooting wide open remember what I said a little bit earlier if you're shooting wide open that actually means that your aperture number is very small so the smaller number means the bigger aperture it works in reverse remember it's a little bit confusing and the larger your aperture number gets actually the smaller your aperture is becoming and remember the aperture is that iris that opens and closes letting in more light letting in less light less light and less light and as that aperture opens up all the way you're getting a shallower depth of field and as it closes all the way you're getting a deeper depth of field right so what I'm going to do is start off at 2.8 and I'm going to work all the way up to 22 now that's going to be pretty boring for you guys to watch me do that but uh, we'll check them out at the computer but I will also show you at the computer how you need to make sure that you're keeping things well exposed by using your exposure meter in your camera which is just that little graph thing that you see that has zero negative positive and you have to make sure that you try and keep it to zero if you're shooting in manual and the way that I do that so as I click up and down with my aperture I have to remember I have to change my shutter speed and my ISO to keep the exposure good enough for us to see at the computer uh, but however as I said we will get into shutter speed next week and then ISO the week after that and then we'll mold all of these together to give you a fully in-depth manual experience so forgive me I'm going to get started here and uh, I'll see you back at the computer Right guys, welcome back to the computer. I finally had a chance to sit down and have a look at what we were getting up to a couple of days ago. Um, in terms of those Ellie's, it was just an absolutely wonderful sighting. Lovely to see elephants in that golden hour lighting coming in. And there must have been a good 50 or 60 of them at one point. You know, the light just got a little bit too dim for us to um, take some photographs. But I had a great time um, with these Ellie's. I found that I, I was using the D850 with the 70 to 200 f2.8 
more than my um, uh, DA10. The DA10 got some cool photos, but I just, you know, the 200, 400 was maybe just a bit close for the situation. And I mean, there's still some great stuff here I'll, that I'll, you know, have a look at and, and see if there's something usable to come out of them. But today I'm just going to be focusing on the D850. It just, you know, love this setup. Um, plus it's got that F28, which we spoke about um, on the vehicle. So, you know, just to show you guys what it is capable of and so on. Um, but yeah, I really did enjoy the Ellie's. It was great fun to photograph them. And um you know, as I say, you can vary your your aperture as you're photographing elephants. I find f2.8 works quite well for them when they're at a bit of a distance, as it often does. Um, I mean, you can see this was taken at f2.8. And remember, I said I wanted to try and get something in the background, that dead tree sticks out. It just gives your image a little bit more interest. You know, Africa's littered with these dead trees, these skeleton trees. Um, so, yeah, you know, when you do get a nice elephant bull walking through and there's a nice tree in the background, try and get the whole thing in. Um, but yeah, I could have done a bit better to get the final tips in. But uh, yeah, um, the one thing I wanted to show you guys was, you know, the reason why I enjoy this setup so much and the, F, the 70 to 200 with the D850. It's a high megapixel camera. Um, and, you know, if you are looking for a, a smaller setup, um, you know, 70 to 200 mil lens is, is not a huge lens. It's easy to get around the world. It's light and so on. Uh, and you do and you are on the market to upgrade your camera. Um, and you want to go this route, try and look at getting a high megapixel camera. You know, something like the Nikon D850 comes to mind, the Sony A7R2, or, um, you know, those, those high resolution cameras, the Canon uh, 5D Mark IV that Chad uses. Um, those are beautiful cameras, and, um, you know, paired with the 70 to 200, you'll get some great results. So I've cropped in on this image already. I've used a, um, let me push D for develop. I've used a 4x5 crop and I wanted to show you that's how little of that image I actually cropped out there and to show you you know how much resolution you're actually getting look at that that's still a beautiful usable image at that right there I mean it's not going to print huge it's uh, you know it's not going to do any billboards uh, but for your website for your Instagram also to print you know up to probably the size of an A3 a little bit bigger um, you'll have a very, very, um, you know, a, a pretty good result. You'll be pretty happy with this. So that's, so that's sort of my one cheat, high megapixel camera with a smaller, high quality lens. And uh, it, it just adds up to a much more manageable setup, much quicker lens, much quicker camera. And uh, Bob's your ankle. You've got some pretty cool shots. But anyway, we're here to talk about aperture today because that is the main theme of this episode. And uh, first of all, I wanted to show you this elephant. So please forgive my exposure and things like that um, I have also applied my presets here so things are looking a little bit wacky you know if I was to just drop these off you'll see that sort of uber warmth is going to disappear but anyway let's chat about aperture so you can see up here I was shooting this at f2.8 so I was shooting at an ISO of 800 in fact let me just check the second one quick uh, yeah so you can see there f2.8 and as I go through here I'm going to go through them quite quickly and go back there to the loop because that just goes a bit quicker through the images but as I go through you'll see the back bushes here will come more and more into focus so don't focus on the elephants he's going to stay in focus the whole time they're going to be pretty pretty but as I go through watch quite quickly watch how those bushes become more and more and more and more into focus now they're not in perfect focus don't get me wrong I mean I could have pushed that up a little bit further f22 and probably got them decently in focus or you know step back a little bit or driven my vehicle back a little bit to to get a bit more focus and remember this is what I was saying uh, on the vehicle it, it's not just um, a low aperture that's going to give you that bokeh background that milky blurred in background um, like something like that elephant trunk we were just looking at where is he now let's quickly have a look it's going to give you this blurry background um, it's, it's also the range of your focal length so how far your lens zooms and also how close you are to the subject and I'm going to show you that in just a short while when I, I show you how I photograph some thorns and a, and a few little leaves uh, further testing the aperture but yeah it's not just all about getting a lens with a huge aperture um, um, and shooting it all the way open that's going to get you the bokeh you also have to be close you have to be zoomed in you know things like that but yeah as you can see as my aperture goes or stays or goes up sorry so remember the aperture as it goes up that means that the iris is closing it's getting narrower bringing more into focus interestingly enough but also making the image darker and as i go up from f2.8 i'm at shutter speed of 1 over 4000 it then goes to 1 over 3200 and that's because i'm having to find that extra light so i could push my iso up but in this instance, I decided to use the shutter speed to bring that extra light in. Uh, so yeah, have a look as I go up and F, losing light, bringing that light back in with my shutter speed. And you can see it's pretty pleasing results all, all the way around. Until eventually I get to that F22 where the trees are all looking pretty in focus. Even that elephant's butt back there is pretty, you know, explanatory. 
Uh, you can see I'm all the way down at a shutter speed of 1 over 1 125. And that's 1 25th of a second. Um, 1 125th of a second is how quickly that shutter is closing. So it's very slow, it's bringing in a lot of light. But you have to be careful shooting that slow because uh, you can end up with blur just through hand movement. In other words, your camera is taking the photo slower than your hands are moving or the animals moving. But we're going to chat about shutter speed next week. Anyway, so that's what's happening. Let me quickly uh, go here to the 23rd and show you um, what I was talking about with the little thorn tree. Um, so here I was standing quite close, maybe four feet. And this is what I'm trying to explain is the closer you are to your subject, the milkier or the more bokeh your background is going to look. So this is at f2.8. You can see I went up with both ISO, both ISO and uh, down with shutter speed to maintain my uh, exposure here. So um, you can see, watch as I go through the photographs, watch up here as things change, but also how the background comes more and more into focus. To a point, but there we go. See that shutter speed getting slower, ISO just went up a bit, and slowly but surely that background is coming into focus. Now I did step back a little bit there, but it kind of shows you um, how all of a sudden your subject starts to get lost in the background. Uh, whereas when you're shooting at f2.8, boom, there's your subject, it's not hard to find them. Even up to f8, there's your subject, not hard to find them. So yeah, then what I decided to do is step back a little bit, 10 feet away, zoomed in, 200 mils, and once again f2.8. And because I was zoomed or standing back quite far, you'll see this will have the aperture going up, or that iris closing and allowing less light in but more focus uh, to be absorbed. Uh, you'll see that this background becomes more focused quite quicker, uh, far quicker than, than the blue images over here. So let's go through them quick. Still want to edit an image here. So there we go. And you've kind of lost the subject already. All right. And as I went up, you could see my settings. I'm all the way up at ISO 100 here, or 1000. So yeah, all of a sudden, you've kind of lost the subject you were trying to track. He's he just mixed up in all the other leaves. And uh, yeah, so that should give you a pretty good explanation. Next week, we'll chat about shutter. But uh, for now, let's quickly have a look at some elephant photos. There was one in particular photograph, uh, one photograph in particular that I wanted to edit for you guys. And it was this little baby elephant over here because he's so full of attitude. He doesn't love an elephant full of attitude, man. Let's have a look at him. Nice big photograph. That eye's looking stunning. You know, the lighting was perfect. Look at all those little whiskers on his trunk there. Cutie pie, man. So let's jump into the develop module. And you can see that I already have my preset um, um, put onto these photographs. So, um, and I'll show you in a later video how to set up your own preset. But that just gives me a starting base for my images. So you can see it is looking pretty cool how it is already. Um, and let's jump into it and just start editing a little bit further. You see I've already given it a vignette. I've brought back some color calibration. Um, and I'm happy where those are. You can see if I drop these, look at how that warmth goes and the color sort of loses its vividness. So um, let's go back up to 10 on each. You can go to 15. Actually, I was really enjoying that 15. That's usually where I start is at 15. But anyway, I've kept my vignettes. I'm happy with that. I might come back and put a little bit more, but for now, that's cool. I'm going to enable the profile correction um, to see what happens. Uh, actually, I'm going to leave it. I like that kind of sunken back in. It's not always necessary to flatten your images out. They, they look pretty pretty. Anyway, then we're going to do some classic sharpening. Remember what I said? You click, push tab or alt and drag across until your subject is the only thing that you're really worrying about. So let's go right over there, 100 all the way. You can see those highlights showing up his ears, his trunk, where the detail is being found. Uh, and then let's up that sharpening amount to 60. As I say, I don't often go over 60. You're welcome to if you want. You just end up with a little bit of a, uh, I don't know how to explain it really bit of a noisy weird sharpened image that people can see from a mile away but uh yeah there we go we sharpened him a little bit let's carry on going up um there's a little bit of yellow in this image let's give the yellows a bit more pump let's give the greens a little bit more let's get them a little bit more pumped up uh, and then the eye i'm not going to worry about trying to get that with the sliders here we're going to go in and brush that in a second all right vibrance this could be a little bit tricky here it's kind of a little bit quite fairly warm already but let's see what happens so let's push that up to 10 and then as i say i like to push contrast up in tandem so let's go up to 10 there and you see it's starting to look a little bit yellow so what i do is i come down here and i go cool let's drop these to 10 again and we kind of get that back while maintaining the, the contrast that's been achieved and we can even push it up a little bit more then as usual let's check black and white nah it's not going to work in black and white but we can check the highlights up down um I actually think I might add a little bit of highlighting here just because that background there kind of absorbs it quite nicely, you know. But uh, yeah, let's go up to 30. Let's not do too much. Um, and I think that's cool for the image as it is right now. 
Uh, if you're feeling like this is too warm in one of your images, you can just drop that warmth a little bit there if you want as well. Um, so I'm going to leave it where it is. But right, let's go in on that eye. And I mean, it's already popping like crazy, but let's give it a little bit, just a little bit more oomph. Remember what I said, don't get carried away on the eyes. You can very easily get carried away on the eyes and make it look like you have a demon elephant or whatever. Uh, so yeah, let's just get in there. A little bit messy today. That's okay. I'm highlighting black, so I'm not going to really play with the blacks. So there we go. Let's take that away before I mess around here too much. I have upped it already, so there it is at normal. Let's go up one, up two. That's actually fine. Let's give it a little bit more saturation, maybe up to five. And I know it looks a bit goofy close up, but as soon as you kind of come away, there you go. The ice just got a little bit more life um, to it there. So yeah, that's that's that. Um, beautiful little baby elephant. I will work on this image a little bit more. Maybe it'll be in this week's uh, final two images for you guys to let me know which one you prefer. Um, but yeah, until next week where we'll be discussing shutter speed and things like that and how it works and why it's important. Um, and we'll also start, you know, talking about why I think shooting in manual is uh, the best way to do it. However, if you prefer to shoot an aperture priority or shutter priority, go for it it's your photography so really really enjoy it uh, but yeah if you have any questions uh, pertaining to shutter speed or to aperture um, please feel free to drop a comment below and i will happily come back to you um, and uh, you know another option that i have on the table guys is if you would like send me your raw images you can always email me or get in touch send me a raw file of one of your images and maybe i can edit it live on the series for you you know i think that could be quite fun um, you can maybe see how your how i would edit your image uh, before you do so or you know compare it to the edit that you've done already and see how different we are in these terms um but yeah this was a great afternoon cool sunset there that i'm also gonna or just that sky with the stars just starting to come out um at the steady up a little bit you can see it's more of a blur but it's there but yeah guys until next week happy snapping keep safe everybody bye